What's up, weirdo? Shea Tree Surgeon here with the incredibly dangerous, the Eldritch Horror, a 10,000 mile tall interdimensional demigod from the Dimension X, the one and only gothic palm tree necrogenic, has, uh, you know, come into our dimension, made themselves look like a human for a motorcycle ride, you know? It was either a motorcycle ride or spend the next 10,000 years being devoured in the pit of seven stomachs. So we chose motorcycle ride, but we're keeping our options open. These claws? No, don't worry. These claws were made for something else. I, I gotcha. Yeah, they're made for doing nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> made for doing nothing else. I love that. Trust me, you don't want to piss off an ageless eldritch horror from the beyond. So we are taking the bad boy. We are taking the last action hero. It doesn't have a back seat. So we're going to just do a little test at first. And if Necro doesn't like it, well, we'll switch to something else. I can put it on reserve. I don't know if it's on reserve already. Let's see. No, I've got reserve still. I'm taking my life in my hands right now, dude. I'm about to get in trouble. I love the way you stand up from it, though. You look so cool. I watch you in the mirror and you unfold from it like a like an arachnid. Get a little bit of that stab and grab juice. The stuff never lets me down. Yes, the butt sweat on the seat and the arachnid mounts <laughs> all six feet of it. You can't ask a mile high demigod to get that small when they come to our plane of existence, okay? Six feet was the minimum. It's just crazy how easy this thing cruises. As I said in previous videos, this thing has less than a thousand miles on it. The bike, even though it's a time capsule of the 90s with its big stepdad energy, it's been preserved in amber all the way back when, you know, uh, Deep Blue beat Kasparov. You know, some people might wonder why it's only six footers and up on the back of the bike. First off, armrests. Second off, I'm awful wide, you know. You need a little bit of a wingspan to get your arms around me. Perusing, baby. I love it. Green, purple, and black. I think those are the official colors of, of the old Eldritch Horror back there. Oh, let's go around that. That doesn't look like fun. It does actually have suspension, but uh, there is no seat pad back there. <laughs> and I don't want it angry. Well, I think these are the actual colors for uh, the, the people who uh, have a thing for monsters. When I say a thing for monsters, well, uh, I was like, oh, cool. I, I like monsters. I love Godzilla movies. Monsters are super cool. And uh, the old gothic palm tree back there clued me in like a thing for monsters. Hey, what can I say? You learn something new every day. And, uh, you know, with rule 34 being in effect, I shouldn't have been surprised. How about it down in the chat? Anybody in Shade Tree Army? We got any uh, monster appreciators down there? I promise we don't kick shame around here. Live to ride, ride to brunch. <laughs> As we well know, the way to the heart of any eldritch demigod is through food. We're just making sure that it's brunch and not the torn and twisted bodies of the non-believers. He's so lucky. <laughs> They should be so lucky. Devoured and digested for 10,000 years by the, the horror from Planet X? Get in line. All right, Dally Grausenkaiman back there, the horror from Planet X, is actually not only descending from their place on high in outer space to take on a human form and go to brunch with me on the back of the bike, they're also going to help me pack some of your orders. It's Monday. I said all the orders would be out today. I said make it before Sunday and we'll get it out today. But we had a few come in late Sunday. Sunday night and then this morning, so uh, the gothic palm tree back there said uh, they'll help me pack them up. And big ups to the gothic palm tree back there because this motorcycle doesn't have a back seat, man. This 90s bad boy, this big stepdad energy having chopper, there ain't no back seat on this thing. You gotta get the cooter on the scooter and put it directly on the fender and it takes a special breed to pop on some leopard print short shorts and jump on this thing right here, all right? And there might be a lot of battery operated toys out there. Tech Technology has come a long way, but uh, there's no replacement for displacement, and that uh, that 100 cubic inch Evo down there, it does something to anyone. All right, all right, all right. It's enough time on the irresistible Evo here. The last action hero. 
let's get home and finish up y'all's packages. <laughs> huge, huge, huge thanks to all you weirdos out there who have chosen Rap Star to cover your nakedness. We appreciate you guys for supporting our small business and we're always trying to make things bigger and better. More big things for Brapstar coming up soon. Okay, the orders are packed. Brunch is eight and the sun has gone down. And it's time for one thing. And that thing is the return of Willem Dafoe's The Green Goblin. As done by Shaylee C. Look out, Spider-Man. <laughs> Let's get on this. Uh, you're gonna have to look at this on the Shaylee C channel because I'm putting down my camera and picking up hers. <laughs> the Brap Star shirts out and delivered to you guys are in the hands of the USPS now and Shaylisi even printed a manifest. I was against it and I'm also against learning how to print one but but Shaylisi was doing the post office right. She's got a kind heart for our enemies. Too kind some might say. It's a hard cruel world out there and our enemies plot our destruction and downfall at every turn but Shaylisi still finds it somewhere in her heart to have compassion for our arch nemeses. I do not. There is and always will be a blood feud between Jade Tree Surgeon and the USPS. Anyway, here at the fort, we got a shipment in too. Uh, something I'm really, really excited about. It's been something I've been working on for a while with an artist that we're good friends with, and I love how these things turned out. It's a little different. This is something we've never done before, but now available at brapstar.com are Brapstar skateboard decks. Well, it'll help if I held it up the right way. Sorry, let's try that again. Now available at brapstar.com, the very first Brapstar skateboard board decks. These things turned out absolutely freaking amazing in my opinion anyway. This one's still got the cellophane on it so you know that's why it looks so weird and shiny. So we got that screaming chicken and then we've also got one to commemorate our cannabis product coming out in Oregon. We're going up there in about a month or so. I'm not sure exactly when but we're going up to Sugar Tree Farm to celebrate the Brap Star release of our very first cartridges in Oregon. We'll also have distillates available and one of the first strains if you guys watch those videos when we were up in Oregon at Sugar Tree farm picking out all the strains and helping harvest one of the first ones was named whiskey throttle and trust me when i say whiskey throttle and the stuff that's coming out i mean it i wanted to do something cool to commemorate it so we of course we've got the screaming chicken on the on the other skateboard which is like more kind of a traditional brap star design but but we took all the art from whiskey throttle and we adapted it into skateboard form so definitely going to be a board uh, that you know you gotta be kind of 420 friendly to wanna to have it. But even if you're not, it's still a really cool design. Now these skateboards are Canadian maple, they're seven ply. You can absolutely skate with these. These things are ready to go. They're real skateboards. These aren't like just to hang on the wall. Although you're more than welcome to hang them on the wall too. I just knew when I when I ordered them and it was a little more expensive on my end to order ones that not wall decorations. I know that some people will just get them to hang them on the wall. We're keeping a couple here to hang on the wall. But if you actually wanna skate with these, they're ready to do it. Those should be up on brapstar.com right now. We didn't order a ton of them because they're not cheap to get. So these are definitely limited edition. There's not gonna be many of them. So if you guys want one, you're gonna have to jump on it soon. Also, bad news for international orders. I'm going to offer it. It's gonna be on there going to be expensive. The kind of box you have to get to ship a skateboard is oddly shaped. It's a very weird dimension. So even domestic shipping for us is going to be between like $25 and $30 to ship one of these things. And international shipping, just to get it to Canada, it's $50. Bucks. To get it to Australia, it's over $80. So it's I'm going to put it on there. I'm going to put it as an option. There's nothing I can do about that. That's that's me losing money on the shipping costs just because it's never exact. You know, it, it comes in at about $80 bucks for like the low 
lowest number that I could get. This happens with all my international orders. I don't want any of my international peeps out there to stop ordering shirts, but since I can't judge where they're gonna go, I just kind of go with the lowest number I can. I end up getting burned and losing money on international orders. It's not the biggest deal in the world. And when I say losing money, we usually like break even. Like if I send out an international order, which is kind of a break even thing, but you know, I feel so good about having you guys out there support me that I don't mind doing it. There's no way around this. It's expensive. The international shipping is crazy, crazy expensive on these. If you really want one, we'll send it out. I just, if you go on there and you click international and it says $85 or something like that, it's not me being greedy, I promise you. All right, well that's enough about skateboards. Let's go ride motorcycles. Mm, actually, Lisey's Sportster ain't quite done yet. I was way too drunk to work on it. So we owe Brian big time. My Sportster, however, is running fine. So I'm gonna ride it. Oh yeah, this thing is running just fine. And uh, see, you know they left the house around five o'clock. You kind of need something with the uh, off-road. When I say off-road, I mean sidewalks and parking lots. The off-road capabilities of the Dirtster because it's catch as catch can in Tampa traffic. Uh, you know, I don't just owe Brian at the Ride Factory. I come to think of it, I owe pretty much everybody at the Ride Factory. All right, gun it, let's go. Fortune favors the bold, come on. I will tell you though, uh, Brian's obviously not just a technician at the Ride Factory. Well, he owns it. He's not just the owner of the Ride Factory, just like Shelby isn't just a tech at the Ride Factory. Joe, the mountain Jedi, the mechanical Jedi, is not just a tech at the Ride Factory. These people are all my friends, okay? Brian has been, the whole, holy crap, dude. I've known Brian since Brian was my age. I've known him for over 20 years. I knew him before he opened the Ride Factory. I knew him uh, like while he was opening it through all the trials and tribulations that comes with starting a new business. So I've definitely over the past two decades been on some pretty wild adventures with Brian. So he's not just the dude who owns the motorcycle shop. He's a dear close personal friend of mine. Same goes for Shelby and Joe and everybody else who works there. The fact that he was helping us out last night with Shaylee C. Sportster drinking beer years in the garage and basically just fucking off with us. You know what? He would never accept any money for that because that's, he's not doing it for the money. He's doing it because we're friends. So uh, we'll have to figure out some other way to pay him back. Not pay him back because I don't owe him anything. That was not something he did so I could owe him. He did that because he's my friend. So I'm going to get him a friend gift in return. what a steak actually is when it's dry aged, what it means to dry age it. It's an answer that I didn't have for so long that I was afraid to ask. Jacob over here at the High Speed Market did not make me feel stupid. <laughs> so thank you. Although now everyone online is gonna make fun of me for not knowing what dry aging is. Baby, we deliver in that Uber Meats to the ride factory. Like I say, always support your local motorcycle shop, but uh, you know, support your local butcher too. There's no reason you can't shop at your local meat market or your local butcher or anything like that instead of, you know, going to the big grocery store. I get it, you can't go here all the time. I just kind of treat it like a special occasion thing. You know, when you want to buy something special for your friends, you get it at a place like this, not at Publix. So even though the dry age steak is not what I would call cheap, that definitely wasn't cheap, but you know what? My friends don't deserve me to cheap out because the value of the skill that they bring me you know, but they're just good friends on top of it. So, you know, the fact that they're amazing friends would really be enough. That'd be enough to spend some money anyway. But on top of that, the things that they bring to the table, like Shelby, Joe, and Brian, the skills that they have are not cheap either, man. Those are skills that cost a lot of money. A lot of times they end up giving them to me for free because they're very, very, very good friends of mine. And now it's usually not free. Usually when I say free, that means uh, we've been friends for two decades. I get to make a phone call every once in a while. So you put in your 20 years of friendship before you start expecting uh, free advice over the phone, okay? All right, Chief, we gotta figure this one out, okay? Uber Meats delivery is not waiting on anyone. They would be amazing friends and worthy of buying an expensive steak to say thank you for your friendship anyway. But on top of that, but on top of that, the skills that they bring to the table as friends are immense. What's really funny about this though is I've never actually eaten a dry aged steak. I'm not exactly in the income bracket where I regularly get dry aged steak for myself. Usually, uh, usually we're shopping at Costco for the steak, okay, and I'm buying it in bulk. So they're gonna actually have to tell me uh, if dry aged steak is any better than just regular old steak, because I don't even know. But I'll tell you, your friends are worth it. You're good, good friends, people who are there for you, people who look out for you. 
It was worth it, man. Plus, uh, I really kind of owe Brian, you know? When he comes over just to drink beer and hang out, and I end up talking him into working on Shaylisi's carburetor, that, that was a little dirty on my part. I kind of did I kind of did old B from the Ride Factory a little dirty on that one, okay? So, I, I, I owe him. I still can't get over how good this thing handles now with those new shocks, man. Sucker is on rails, baby. And it pulls the front wheel up when you slam into second gear. This Sportster is done. I mean, almost. A bike is never done. How long is a piece of string? A build is never done. The last thing I really want to do is put pegs that are a little farther back on it because they're way better for standing. Other than that, dude, I love this bike. It's perfect. It's exactly what I want. It's a brawler. It's a ripper. It hauls ass. It does wheelies. It handles like a dream. The suspension is set up for my weight. It's got storage. Uh, it's ugly as sin, but hey, you can't have it all, can you? That's why God made me ugly. He knew I'd be too powerful if he made me pretty. Joke's on you, God, sucker. Because, baby, I'll tell you this right now. I'm going to whisper a sweet nothing in your ear, give you that gentle caress, and uh, I'll always do that little thing you like that the other boys won't do, okay? Bikers do it better. Cowboys do it longer. But at the end of the day, all the people in Shade Tree Army, we do it a little weirder. Good friends are worth their weight in gold and also worth their weight in flesh. <laughs> Brian, you are absolutely worth your weight in dry aged meats. Joe's Frankenstein Roadstar over here with Harley bags, a Harley tour pack, whatever these risers, whatever he got these risers off of, they probably came off a of Harley as well. I think he made these himself as well. It's actually got Harley Davidson wheels on it because he made the adapters to make them fit. Joe's a, actually an incredible machinist. He's a really great engineer. I know they're missing a whole bunch of other stuff that he custom made on this bike, but it's got like a lot of weird stuff that you wouldn't near really see because it is kind of just like a junkyard dog mix of everything. Stuff like those wheels though, where you're like, oh, okay, whatever, you don't even think about the wheels but you have to know what you're doing to get random wheels off a of harley to fit on a yamaha road glide road star all right back to the fort we got a live stream tonight oh there's a rare bike that's a vulcan 2000 you don't see those around everywhere for a while that was the largest production v-twin that you could get the vulcan 2000 cc and i wanted one so freaking bad but i think every dude who had a kawasaki vulcan 1500 he really just wanted the vulcan 2000 Hell yeah. The scoots, baby. You always got to give them a wave or a nod. Your knees are in the breeze. Two wheels or three. I don't care. We're all out here having fun. The last action hero. The 90s bad boy. Big stepdad energy. A motorcycle owned by a union electrician named Gary. This is the whole reason why you got a stepdad and ended up playing N64 on a nice big rear projection TV and uh, set up your single mom's duplex, okay? This motorcycle made families. And sure, this is the type of motorcycle in the 90s that might have taken a single swinging dick like Gary running out on the town and doing whatever he pleased it. I'd have taken him into a pre-made family, but you know what? It was pretty good. When you were a kid in 97 playing GoldenEye on N64 with a couple of sticky controllers, let me tell you what, you and your brother knew for sure when this ground pounder started rattling the windows of your duplex, it was about to be a Benadryl and Blockbuster night. And speaking of families, speaking of, and speaking of families, we are raffling this motorcycle off. This bike can be your bike. This Friday, in two days, we're pulling a ticket for this bike live. 100% of those proceeds go directly to Forgotten Angels, doesn't hit any branches on the way down, it goes directly to them, and they're going to use it to help fund their fight to end the cycle of foster care abuse. 25 bucks, I know it doesn't seem like it could do a lot, but it can, and I'm tired of hearing people say that it can't. 25 bucks, that's a couple days worth of food. 25 bucks is a full tank of gas. 25 bucks can save somebody's life. And all you guys who have donated already, I want you guys to feel good, I want you to feel amazing, I want you to know that you did a good thing. I want you to know that you did something that's going to help change somebody's life. You should feel good about that sacrifice. And I know that you made a sacrifice to do it. Every 25 bucks you spend on a raffle ticket, that's 25 bucks that you didn't spend on something you wanted. Hell, it could have been 25 bucks that you wanted to spend on Brapstar.com. Trust me, that's a luxury. What we sell on Brapstar.com is not necessities. Those are luxuries. And if you have to make a choice between buying a Brapstar t-shirt from us 
us or spending 25 bucks on a raffle ticket where you know 100% of it's going to help somebody to fund charities, to do good work, to change the world. That's an easy sacrifice to make. Spend the money on the raffle ticket instead. I would be aghast if somebody had money to spend and they spent it on something that we sell instead of spending it on charity. Now, if you got enough money for both, I'm not gonna stop you, but, but if you have 25 free dollars and you're gonna spend it on a luxury item, if you're gonna spend it on something you don't need and that something was going to be a Brap Star shirt, spend it on this instead. I want you to do that. I want people to do that. Those are sacrifices that we make because when we donate money to charity, we are sacrificing something out of our own lives. And you shouldn't forget that. You shouldn't just go, oh, it's extra money. I don't even care. If you buy raffle tickets, like I said, 25 bucks, five for a hundred for this motorcycle. I want you to think about the things that you could have done with that money instead, because you are making a sacrifice to help somebody who has less than you. And you should think about that because you're appreciated for it. And if you just say, oh, it doesn't matter. It's money. I had it anyway. I don't, I don't want that. I want you to know that it's appreciated. And I want you to know that I personally think about your sacrifices as does Shaylee, as does Dave and Cindy, as do all the recipients of your kindness who benefit from Forgotten Angels. I don't care if you're a millionaire, 25 bucks is still money. So you should think about what that means to you when you buy a raffle ticket for this bike. But dang, that is a badass bike right there. I know it's about the charity. You know, it's about helping people, but that is a sick motorcycle, man. Like I said, nineties time capsule, the bad boy, hundred cubic inch engine. The thing rips. The last raffle we did, it was like one in 300, something less than that. So the chances for this are better than a scratch off, like way better than a scratch off. Not only are the chances usually like one in 300 or something like that. Like I said, we do these every two weeks. So the chances are good. I wanted it set up that way. So everybody who enters, you get a better chance to win something. But every single raffle ticket you've bought thus far, you'll actually see when you go to the page, it enters you to win $250,000. So no matter when you buy the ticket or how many tickets you buy, or even if you win one of the motorcycles or something else we're giving away, you are still entered to win $250,000 or a house. And I don't know if being my neighbor is punishment or reward. That's going to be up to you. I'm going to err on the side of punishment, but you know, I, I know what it's like to be friends with me. I, I make it hard to be my friend sometimes, trust me, as evidenced by multiple people whose lives I regularly inconvenience. But you can still just take the $250,000. Either way, every single raffle ticket you've bought enters you to win that no matter what. Even if you won every single motorcycle, you won every single bike we ever gave away, you're still entered to win the $250,000 or the house. We're bad people doing good things. We're gambling for a good cause. We are good-hearted villains and dangerous women, maybe. And you can do it too. We got no excuses anymore. We're changing the world. Forgotten Angels is expanding outside of Florida. We're trying to take what we do here in our small corner of Florida, and we're trying to expand it to the rest of the country. I want a Forgotten Angels near you. And we're doing it together because I'm tired of looking at these problems and thinking that we can't do anything. We absolutely can. We might not be able to bring about world peace. We might not be able to end world hunger, but this is something that we can affect. I appreciate you guys joining me on this journey. Everyone who subscribed, everyone who subscribed, to Shay Lisi, everybody who helps out Forgotten Angels, who comes to the campouts, everyone who's donated motorcycles or allowed me to buy them for less than they're worth because they want to donate it to Forgotten Angels. You guys are amazing. I appreciate you so much. You should feel good. You probably got a lot of stuff you shouldn't feel good about. I definitely have my laundry list of things I should not feel good about, and sometimes I feel good about them anyway, but we're going to go ahead and feel good about this one, all right? Till next time, y'all, keep it weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Evil taking flight. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Panic spreading far and wide. Can the world oppose the deadliest of foes? Shade Tree Army! Shade Tree Army! Who will risk it all to end the evil call of Shade Tree? Army! Shade Tree Army! They never give up, they never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.